Hello, 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 and welcome to Photo Finish, the great pop culture debates video review of the fashions on season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm your host, Eric Resniak, and I'm joined by my very special guest, Kate Reculia. Kate, you and I started this journey together back when season 13 promo was put out in December, I want to say. It was right? a long time. It was, it was a long a, time. Yeah, like we made it through the wilderness. Somehow we made it through. I didn't know how lost I was until I found Rue, you. Yeah, let's go for it. That I, um, <laughs> at this point, after quarantine, I almost feel like a virgin again. But um, yeah. I yeah. think most of the men in New York, Boston, Rochester, Charlottesville, <laughs> Virginia. No, that's not true. So uh, we're going to continue. We're going to finally get into the finale of this unending interminable season. Ooh. We're going to toot, boot, shoot, poot moot the looks from the finale of season 13. We are gonna do this really fast, by the way, for all the eliminated queens, it's just gonna be basic ratings and then we're gonna get into the meat of the episode, which is the top four's ball look. So with that said, we're gonna take it away with our first eliminated queen, it's Kamora Hall. Kate, what do you think? You know, I feel like this is a little bit all over the place, but I like it. I like the details. I like that it's kind of wild. It's, it, I feel like it's a two for me. It's a soft toot for me. That's, I, I, um, I think the bottom of it's really interesting. I'm not sure what's yeah. going on at the top, but it's a soft toot. Next up, we have Joey J. Kate? It's cute. It's cute. Cute rhymes with toot. <laughs> I'm feeling very generous. I've aged so much in the time of this, in the time of the show. I'm just like, they're all nice. I love them. Yay. So that's a toot for you? It's a toot. It's a moot for me. Um, <laughs> I will say the wig looks better in this photo than I've seen it in any other photo. It was almost green in some of the photos I saw. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have Tamisha Iman. Kate. This is a two for me. I love the sort of like coppery, chocolatey, shiny, like it's beautiful. It's beautiful. The hair, everything. She's still doing the neck thing, but it's still a two. And it's actually better than neck thing here. This mm -hmm. is an absolute toot. This is Miss Diahan Carroll on Dynasty. Yep. Yep. I'm living for it. We love Tamisha. We stand an icon. Next up, we have La La Ri. You know, I also like this. This is kind of a soft toot for me. I like the drama of the shoulders. I like the print. I like the the bald. Like, I like this look a lot. Uh, the total toot for me. This is one of the best she's looked the entire season. Yeah. Next up, we have Elliot with two T's. Kate? This is giving me Devil Wears Prada, but in Palm Springs on a chilly night, and I don't hate it. This is a toot for me. <laughs> yeah, it's a toot for me. It's um, expensive bitch, and that's kind of Elliot's thing. And mm -hmm. uh, well, it's expensive bitch on a budget. Um, yeah. and, and so that's what Elliot is. Uh, discount is expensive bitch. Next up, it's Denali. This is a shoot. I freaking love this. Like throughout the season, I've increasingly liked Denali. I've sometimes wondered in her fashion, her proportions are off. This is killer all the way. Shoot the hair, the nails, everything. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I'm really bordering on a shoot for this too. I'm going to hold on to it because I think the finale looks are, are better, but it's a definite two. Super fun look for Denali, um, who I think won the whole season in my heart. Next, it's Tina Burner. Kate. It's off too. It's fine. It's not orange. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and toot this. This is not the Tina Burner look I've come to expect. Yeah. Um, I feel like she's having an identity crisis, but that's for her and her psychiatrist. Next up, we have Utica Queen, Kate. This is a toot for me. I wish she'd done something a little different with the head, but the gown, the volume, the texture, it's like, I don't even know if I'm looking at something flat or something three-dimensional. It's really cool, too. Yeah, it's, it's a toot for me. I'll go ahead and toot it. Next up, we have Olivia Lux. You know, this is kind of a soft toot also. She looks really pretty. I love the hair. Um, I love the color. I'm not, it's a toot, it's fine. I actually will enthusiastically toot this. I think it looks absolutely beautiful and um, it looks more her age. And that's one of the mm. things that I've critiqued her multiple times this season is she tends to dress very old. This is, I think, beautiful. And I would love to see more of this soft, dewy Olivia should she come back for All Stars. So I believe that brings us to our top four. And we now, so if you didn't watch the finale, we had a ball in addition to all the lip sync uh, ridiculousness. And so they each had to serve three looks. The first category was black and white. Our first queen up was Got Mick. Kate, your opinions? Complete toot. Like pinhead eleganza, loved it. Yeah, this is an absolute toot for me. Um, I love that she had her own little, but it's not the Necromicon. That's it's the It's the uh, Lament configuration, little puzzle box. Yes, the puzzle box thing. Um, the great attention to detail, really effective. It was horror without being grotesque. Mm -hmm. And um, it, this, I believe, is an absolute toot. It yep. was, it was uh, 
a credible way to start the night. Next up, we have Candy Muse. Kate. I really liked this. I think it fits her well. I think it looks beautiful. It's a lovely message. Like, I really like this. This is also a toot for me. This is a toot. I think it's Candy's most successful look of the night. Spoiler. Absolutely. Um, I think she looks pretty in this. I think it's a beautiful gown. Um, The L's are giving me Laverne and Shirley realness. So Shlemiel Shlemazel, Haas and Pfeffer Incorporated. It's a toot for Candy Muse. Next up, we have Rosé. You know, any queen who makes a reference to My Fair Lady is going to have a place in my heart. This is beautiful. I love the playfulness of the proportions. I love the reference. I love everything about it. This is, this might also be a little bit of a shoot for me. This one and Denali's uh, Cactus were two of my favorites of the night. Is it a toot or a shoot? It's a shoot. It's a shoot. I'm going to go ahead and shoot it too. I will give Mm -hmm. you this. It is not the most inventive thing. We've seen versions of this many, many times. Ben de la Creme actually had a dress very similar yeah. to this on season seven, but without the intense volume changing and, mm-hmm. and bows. But I, it's so striking. It is so visually striking. arresting. She sold the hell out of it, even though she probably broke a hip swinging that fucking train. Um, <laughs> but it was, as soon as she came out, it was a moment for me. And that to yeah. me is a shoot. It's very dramatic and I loved it. And that then is finally- Weaponizing black- your BFA. That's what that is. That's what that is. And then finally for Black and White, it's Miss Simone. Kate, what do you think? This is a this is a two. I love it. I love how playful it is. I love the volume. I love the bandana print. I, the hair is gravity defying. Everything about this makes me smile. Um, I'm gonna shoot this one too. I think it is gorgeous. The volume, the hair, the fact that she's using black hankies, which I believe means she's flagging for the the hanky code for being a leather dom queen. Um, I'm 100% on this. I think it's great. And it's great. I was like, how can you top Gottmik? And all three of them actually have all been great. And I was like, can Simone live up to it? And she did. She and delivered. She did. Uh, next we have Red, and our first queen up is Gottmik again. This is great. It's great. It's a two. Everything Gottmik did in the ball was like like just took me to a place and this love the details from the head to the toes everything about this is fantastic too yeah and this is not coming through on this picture and for those who don't know this is the the print on the garment is inspired by artist Keith Haring Mm -hmm. who was an incredibly influential figure in 80s pop art um he was a a victim of the AIDS crisis this was a statement on top of a statement from Gottmik and the form of the garment was a reference to David Bowie what I love about Gottmik is she's taking historical fashion and art and she's making it very modern and appealing to a younger audience which I think is so important right now with internet culture we're losing a lot of historical references um she's amazing and excuse me they're amazing pardon me and uh i agree she they killed the ball and the interview portion um this is i'm gonna shoot this one too i'm gonna do it i don't care it's the end of the season just do it just do it shoot do it i'm going crazy it's candy muse what do you got uh it's kind of a mood really finale of drag race okay fine. It's a moot. <laughs> it's a moot. Um, I, I will say this. I liked the grommets on the hem of the skirt. I thought that was fun, but this is not a finale ball garment. Uh, you're wearing Denali's wig. You're doing a throwback to your entrance look with the boombox, which was a cute, smart idea. I do um, believe that was your top two to the week in the entrance, her entrance look, was it not? Which is damning with faint praise because there were no good entrance looks in this season. Um, and uh, I just don't think this is interesting or elevated. I don't know how Candy wasn't looking at everything else being served up on this stage and looking at herself in this outfit and her next outfit and being like, oh, fuck. But I she totally also, missed like, the mark. All season long, I've never been impressed <laughs> by her fashion. <laughs> like, I mean, she, I don't says, think- she says herself she's delusional. And mm-hmm. it's true. This is a moot. It's not bad. It's fine. But it is it's not. Fine anywhere close to the assignment that anybody else had. Mm -hmm. Um, Next up, Rosé. This is wild. Um, And I really, really appreciate Rosé's like trying to do different things, right? A lot of the stuff that she got read for in terms of her silhouette, really doing stuff outside of that. And I just think that this is a piece of art. This is a two for me. I really like it. I'm actually going to boot it. I don't get it. I'm sorry. Like, you're all right. It's it's outside of her comfort zone. Yep. It's very different. If anything, I would expect you to kind of come out wearing this. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that, that, that it's daring. I didn't get tree from it. I will say that. Maybe it read better in person. Was it? Oh, oh. So it's supposed I, I, to be tree. I thought it was capillaries. That's what oh, I is got. it supposed to be a heart? I, I thought it was, she mentioned trees. Hmm. 
listen, if you're home watching this and it was supposed to be a heart and capillaries and stuff, you can say you, you ignorant bitch and, and you're correct. Um, the fact that we don't know what this is supposed to be shows to me that it's not successful. So you're tooting it, Kate? You know, I'm going to toot it. I am going to toot it because I'm like, what is that? Let me figure it out. <laughs> I think it's super interesting. I don't think it actually is successful in what it's attempting to do. And so for that reason, I'm going to boot it. And then finally we had Miss Simone and this is made out of fucking press on nails. <laughs> Being amazing. <laughs> Completely amazing. I, unconventional challenge shoot. I'm going to give this a shoot. It's so fun. It has incredible movement. She looks like she's having the time of her life wearing it. I love it. Shoot. And the ponytails with the hands and the nails. Oh my God. Um, it's so a toot for me. It's not a shoot, but I think she, it was fun and ridiculous. And I guess I would say this, like people could be saying there's not much of a garment here. It's pretty minimalistic, but it's, it's playful and it's doing something different in a way that I don't think Candy did. And so mm -hmm. for that reason, I'm tooting it. And finally, we have the finale extravaganza. First up, it's got Mick Kate. Jaw on the floor drop dead what is beyond a shoot is anything beyond a shoot like we we have not yet found it but that's a great question it's like you can't stop looking at it the construction is unbelievable but like got mick is wearing this it's not wearing got mick and the heart and the exposed like it's so it's i can't words <laughs> it's so good it's yeah so good um, in my opinion, first of all, this is a shoot. And I, I think this is actually up with Violet Tchotchke's gown that she presented the crown to Bob, with the, the drag queen on in season eight with the, yes. the roaches in the hood. Yes, That is the level of artistry that I see in this. I have seen some people say online that it may have been a, um, the concept may have been lifted from another artist. That's an accusation. Even if that's true, drawing this and executing this are completely different situations this is impeccable like it's, it is mind-blowing I don't I don't even know quite how it's put together <laughs> and it's sort of like it doesn't matter it's just such a complete it is a work of art it's a work of art it's a work of art this belongs in the Met and mm -hmm. like literally I'm not even exaggerating this belongs at the Met um the fact that this look tied for third is absolutely insulting and we'll get to that in my blog which you can find at greatpopculturedebate.com backslash bonus you should read it i have a lot of thoughts moving on we have candy muse kate i appreciate the peacock like the i appreciate the, the sort of story and thought behind it but like in terms especially after what godlink just showed execution silhouette like it's just not in this it's not in the same league it's not even in the same universe she is selling it a little bit but this is i this is another moot for me it's a moot i'm kind of like i'm unmoved to even dislike it enough to give it a boot oh i'm i'm booting it um <laughs> this the headpiece you can't just stick a bunch of peacock feathers on your head and be like i'm a peacock um it's <laughs> it's nothing about this is kind of transmuted it's all mm -hmm. just slapping things on it i mm -hmm. actually found the gown to be 1985 deb prom dress clearance rack it i looked... feel like you could like take that top off and wear it over jeans as jessica mcclintock kept trying to convince me i could do in 1996 i'm like that is not how prom dresses should work. that is not how it works and she no. lied to you she lied to many people she did but, she did but this to me it, it doesn't look finished it looks homemade um it, it it does not look even remotely close to the level that everybody else on that stage was serving especially in this category mm -hmm. i'm glad that candy has her fans i am glad that candy's fans are very supportive of her i think that's right and i hope they continue to support her because every queen should be able to you know make a, uh, their artwork for them mm -hmm. this to me was not even remotely close to the level that that needed to be executed for this and it, it's not extravagant and it's not ready for a finale and it's a boot. It's not a poop, but it is a boot. Moving on, we have Rosé. I love it. It's so Rosé. It's so kind of like, I question your taste about the ruffles a little bit. Like your taste is a little questionable, but that just feels so completely on brand to me. Um, it's not a shoot, uh, but it is a two. Uh, I think she looks gorgeous. I love the detail on the sort of like Elizabethan socks. I, I love the concept of it. The proportions are a little 
they they don't in the way that I struggled with some of Denali's proportions in terms of like balance for the for the fashion throughout the season. I struggle with the proportions of this a little bit, but like I do I do think it is representative of Rose as a queen, and I do think it is Lux. And so it's a two. It's a two for me. I actually don't have any problems with this whatsoever. Yeah. I'm going to shoot this. I think it's gorgeous. I think the proportions are really fun. Um, it is completely over the top. And I mean, every fucking inch of that garment is embellished. I'm looking at it closely now. Mm -hmm. There is not a, an, a, an, a speck of that garment that doesn't have glitter or a stone or a paillette or something on it. Mm -hmm. um, I know some people had issues with the train. They thought that it was costumey and um, over the top. Point. I can't imagine it without the train. First of all, I don't think it would have been nearly as successful. I think this is wonderful. And I think Rosé also, like I didn't love the red look, but those other two looks were excellent. And the fact that she came in th tied for third is a disgrace. And it shows just how broken this format is. So I, shoot for me, Rosé, I think, um, I have thoughts on what happened with Rosé in the finale too. Again, read that blog, but um, <laughs> you can't fault, in my opinion, uh, this look, I think it's legendary. Uh, then finally we have Miss Simone. Speaking of legendary, Kate. Speaking of legendary, le le legendary. Like it's just Greek goddess Medusa, Imperator Furiosa, dot matrix, arm asymmetry, playfulness, glamour, beauty. She looks so stunning. And I, I'm not being very like, <laughs> this season has broken me. It's so long. But Thank I just think this. that this is absolutely legendary this is a shoot for me yeah it's a shoot for me too um first of all let's compliment the wig styling for all of her looks Ugh. tonight through Incredible. the, the lip syncs too every single wig was amazing <laughs> um this is exactly what she said it was on the one hand she had the warrior on the other hand she had the soft goddess that mm -hmm. is very much simone um i think if you were going out to represent who she is in the, in the arc of her as a season in yep. a look this is it and she it's, it's impeccable again mm -hmm. um it's she has elevated and this was ultimately ended up kind of being a look season when we would get to that final four that's a lot of looks um she she really delivered the season in a way very few queens have consistently so it's another shoot for me with all that being said we have to go to our top two of the week kate who you got got mick got mix first like i just i will i uh on the floor it's unbelievable yeah uh, i'm also giving my top two to got mix extravaganza look and this was tough because those ball looks that episode started out really strong with the ball mm -hmm. and then went off a cliff um but those ball looks they all, three out of four of them at least came out swinging yep. and it was hard for me to choose a top but this to me is it has set a new a, a new standard i think yeah it really has looks. it really has i keep I really like so. you keep looking at it and keep finding details and keep like, like, how is she, is she standing? Like, it, it, it's unbelievable. beyond, mm -hmm. it's beyond. So beyond. that is it for us for photo finish for season 13. I want to thank Kate so much for joining me again. Oh, you're welcome. We it's a pleasure. Um, and I want to thank you for watching. I also want to make sure that you are aware that if you go to our website, greatpopculturedebate.com, by the way, follow us on our socials. They're right there on the screen. Um, you will be able to find blogs for this episode and every episode of season 13. You can, as of right now, this will be closing probably tomorrow, join the viewer pool for our Drag Race Down Under uh, group where you pick your queen to get points every week. And at the end, you win a delightful prize package that I don't know what will include, but something Australian themed. Um, yeah. We'll also be doing one for Drag Race Hispania, which should be starting at some point in May. And we will also be doing one for All Star 6, which will be coming in probably June to Paramount Plus. Don't get me started on that. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to make sure that you check out the episodes of our podcast. In fact, this week's episode is Best Drag Race Runway Looks Seasons 1 through 6. If you have not listened to it yet, what are you waiting for? Uh, it's exactly what you're watching this channel for. So please go check that out. It actually is on our YouTube or you can find it on the podcast platform of your choice. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get alerts on all of our upcoming content. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure and uh, we will see you later. Bye.